Hi, and welcome to the Market Alert uh, for Tuesday, the 15th of June 2021. So according to CNBC, another shipping crisis looms on COVID fears in southern China, which is going to delay the shipment of goods from China to the rest of the world by up to uh, 16 days, which of course is then going to add uh, to the uh, inflation scenario that we're actually seeing at the moment. So an interesting article uh, that I was uh, looking for. There wasn't a lot on Zero Edge uh, that was worth mentioning. So well, this was the main thing. And again, this sort of pushes that inflation thing further down the line uh, once more. The implied volatility was up slightly yesterday after the markets came off uh, the highs in the morning, up from 12.46 to 12.86. Again, the market waiting for Powell and Co. tomorrow. Meanwhile, today we've got uh, Bailey speaking again, and uh, we've also got some um, core retail sales, both out just after lunch there at uh, 1.15 and 1.30. And then we've got uh, PPI as well, and also retail sales from the US, and then core PPI as well, and then industrial production out at uh, 2 15 p.m so all the news out before the dow opens uh, this afternoon speaking of the dow let's uh, have a look see if we can find it uh, let's start off with the daily chart you can see yesterday that we had another down day the market uh, retracing down towards the 50 percent level it's been down for the dow over the last few days closing below the five bar moving average which is why the price bars are red uh, trying to get back at the moment. So it's like we've got a bit of a shakeout here pending the FOMC meeting minutes tomorrow to try and bring the market back to the upside. It's going to remove these fibs because so uh, we have a new low. So from this high to yesterday's low is where I will be drawing these uh, from. So you can see at the moment the market also trading at 38%, which ties in with the five bar moving average there. So yesterday, the market uh, looked like this. This is in the five minute chart, and this is the whole of the session. From 2.30, the market just sold off. We can see prices dropping 100 and then 200 points before we get uh, a retracement of uh, about uh, 78, 89% before prices were brought back by the plunge protection team. And then overnight, prices have continued to move higher and stay above the DP level and the 200 uh, level there as well and continue to move to the upside there. In the DAX, an interesting day for this as well. You can see in the daily chart, we put in a new all time high. This happened uh, very early on. It actually happened in the futures market and then it continued to move higher in the main session as well. So 15,806 is the new high. Um, the only thing I would do here, just in case we get a down day, which are rare these days, aren't they? Is from this low to uh, this high, just uh, draw in uh, some downside targets, just in case. Just uh, we get a shakeout, and you've got uh, an idea there. But on the upside, it's just a matter of looking at yesterday's high, which uh, we'll see in just a moment. This is the five-minute chart. You can see prices uh, broke out, and it was straight up for 100 points off uh, the futures low yesterday morning and then the market to hit a brick wall and then trade it down you look at this in the two minute chart you'll see uh, more detail and you will also see how the market stopped here at uh, this uh, new all time high that the market created which uh, as we've just seen in the daily chart is this one i'm just going to leave this on for a second although uh, yesterday's high should be on the chart which for some unknown reason it doesn't appear to be uh, so let's just leave this where it is at the moment and just get rid of these so we can see a bit more so the market uh, then uh, traded back put in a retracement and then just drifted sideways and then just kept breaking down in sideways moves until eventually the market found uh, support here from uh, the low over here to here was a 62 percent retracement before prices moved back and then drifted eventually down to the BRN and then in the afternoon was really quiet and considering that the Dow had a big sell-off the DAX just traded sideways and didn't follow until after 4 p.m. when prices did move down and then uh, played catch-up 
then we see the buying coming back into the market and then uh, back up in the latter part of the electronic session for the German DAX and then overnight prices like the Dow are off the DP level there the daily pivot very quiet though again you can see barely moving in uh, the two minute uh, allotted time frame there for the chart but above the 200 and the DP there so let's have a look and uh, and see what's uh, here oh there's the high for yesterday i don't know why it wasn't showing up oh wouldn't would it because it's uh, you got to go overnight that would help so there we go obviously brain dead this morning yeah so uh, yeah you won't see yesterday's high till we get past midnight so that's why it wasn't showing up which i thought was odd so anyway we've got uh, the high um just up uh, 50 points which i would imagine is going to be attacked and the low uh, about uh, 80 points to the downside there for yesterday uh, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if we don't see an attack on the uh, on the high there to uh, the uh, uh, once the futures market uh, opens I'm just trying to bring it back just to see there we go yeah so we'll see what the uh, futures market does with regards to uh, the uh, DAX as uh, it opens at 7 a.m and in the metals market a very interesting picture going on here yesterday it was just a slow grind down this uh, basel 3 having an impact on the market you can see that they were buying back in here the demand came in and then we shot up uh, nearly 50 cents got to 28 well over 50 cents actually got to uh, uh, 28 dollars uh, per ounce and then as ever we dropped off and then overnight uh, fascinating uh, we can see that they've had a damn good shakeout and uh, now they've uh, tried to bring the market uh, back at the moment which is very interesting considering that the dollar is actually down as well so the dollar and the metals market going down these uh, banksters I think is probably the most polite way of putting it it odd incredible what they're doing at the moment in this market even though the dollar is moving lower so is the price of silver and they're using every opportunity they can to shake out and get rid of those short positions that uh, they'll have to buy at the 28th of june to meet the requirements well certainly for gold it doesn't affect the basel three thing doesn't affect silver but of course it's linked to uh, gold but uh, now you can see them bringing this uh, back here uh, speaking of gold, uh, the market uh, again yesterday had a shakeout. You see them buying it back, and uh, again, a bit of support uh, overnight for this market as well. But interesting that the dollar is actually uh, looking weak, uh, making a move to the downside, and yet uh, they're using any opportunity they can to uh, smack the price of silver down. The good news is that uh, we're stuck in this sideways range, and if it holds through this and consolidates, you know, it doesn't matter how long it takes us, if it's just range bound, uh, as long as it eventually breaks out to the upside, that's fine. The longer it coils sideways, the greater the move and stored energy when it's released. We'll see a bigger move anyway, so just have to put up with it trading sideways at the moment. It's not uncommon for the metals markets to do this. Okay, that uh, will do it uh, for this one. Like I say, there's not a lot to report. The market's waiting for obviously uh, tomorrow's news with regards to what the Fed's going to do in the press conference uh, that uh, will be happening tomorrow. It's quarterly and we're at June, so uh, tomorrow we will see uh, Powell speak after the release of the uh, minutes. Okay, that's it. Uh, as ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.